Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to draw the Nike swoosh using Adobe Illustrator. Now Adobe Illustrator is a vector graphics program. That means it draws using coordinates and because it uses coordinates the picture can be scaled to any size without losing any quality and that's what you want from a logo because you might use your logo nice and small or you might use it massive on a huge great big billboard poster by the side of a motorway or on the side of a sports stadium. So we need that scalable font without it losing um, on that scalable drawing without it losing quality like you would with a bitmap graphic. If we were making bitmap we would use Photoshop but this is vector so we're using Illustrator. So here's my source material. This is what I want to draw. So I'm going to go to Illustrator and make a new image and then I'm going to choose the size of my picture. Uh, I've got things here, paper sizes, but I'm not worrying about paper size and anyway this is a vector graphic so we can put it any size we want when we're finished without it losing quality. So I'm going to put a custom size of 400 by 300 and I'm going to click OK. And that does a nice big picture there, but if I zoom in you can see that this actual image is actually down at 261%, which is far too big, uh, and certainly I can't see my logo. So I'm just going to make that window smaller so I can see my logo, and then I'm going to change the size to about 100%, and you can see that gives me enough room to see the two. So how do I draw in Illustrator? Well, the best way of drawing is with the pen tool and this puts coordinates on the page so if I click and 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 I click, that's there and I click over there you can see I've drawn a very angular uh, swoosh not very swooshy at all but uh, more like a, a, a tick um, but these are points, these are coordinates. So if I just uh, uh, look at those, there they are. Now I can move those if I go to the white arrow, not the black arrow, which would move everything. If I go to the white arrow, I can move those coordinates individually around and position them uh, exactly where I'd want them to be. So I might move that one uh, down a bit like that. So that's sort of roughly the shape of our Nike swoosh, but obviously you can see that's curved and this is angular. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select a couple of those points, one at a time, and convert them from an angle to a curve. So I'm going to click on that one, turn it into a curve, and there's that, and let's take that one and turn that one into a curve. And you can see we're getting towards uh, a good shape for our Nike swoosh. Now, in fact, I'm just going to move this down and make it a little bit bigger so you can see a little bit more clearly. Uh, let's just hide that. And if I go to view, and it fit all in the window, that's a bit bigger. So, if I click on this handle, you can see there are what we call rubber bands handles to our rubber bands and by moving those around I can change the shape of the curve. Now, I want less of a curve on this one because I want it much more straight so just a little bit and then this one I'm going to pull and make the curve of the swoosh I now need to do up here so I'm just going to I think move that up a little bit and maybe over that's looking a bit more like it. Let's get the rubber band on this and see if we can get the curve matching a little bit more. Move that to there. Actually, maybe I'll just shrink that back a bit like that. Yeah, maybe that's just a little bit too fat. It takes a little bit of time to get it absolutely right, but we do that by moving those curves around, and I'm I'm pretty satisfied that's a 
a good enough representation of the Nike swoosh. So I'm going to go to my black arrow, select the shape, and then up here at, on where it says path, I'm going to add some colour so I can make that a black swoosh like our example, or I can make it a red swoosh, and maybe let's get rid of the, the border. So I just get a nice, sharp, clean Nike swoosh, and because I've picked the black, uh, the black arrow, I can rescale that. Let's make that a little bit larger so it fills our page. And I've done my Nike swoosh. So I can save that file. I'm going to call it, uh, let's put it on my desktop for now. Let's call it swoosh. Save it. Click OK. And close that down. And there on my desktop is uh, the original and now the new red Nike swoosh made in Illustrator and is completely scalable. Okay, we can also do uh, different logos using a similar method. Um, I'm going to do the HSBC logo now, uh, which looks like that. And you can see actually this is quite a simple one because this is just four red triangles. So what I'm going to do is in Illustrator, I'm going to make a new um, picture again. 400 by 300 is fine. I get my uh, my screen. I'm just going to shrink that down so I can see um, my source image beneath it. If I go to View and fit all in window, then I can see everything I'm going to draw. Now to help me with this, I'm going to need some guidelines because I want to make sure I draw an accurate um, squares and triangles. So I'm going, to go, I'm going to go to view and rulers and I'm going to show my rulers. So you can see now there's some measurements up here. And this will allow me to draw guidelines that will help me keep my shapes. So I'm going to start off by going to the side and picking the rectangle tool which is over there and I'm going to draw a square. Now, to make the rectangle tool draw a square, you hold down shift, like that. And so there's a square, and I think that's probably about the right size. So I'm going to click on, on that, position the square where I want it to be on the page, and then you can see these handles here. If I grab in the ruler and drag down, it will just put in a guideline for me, around about where the middle is. I'm going to draw ones around the square as well because it's a useful uh, shape for me. And then I'm going to remove the line from that um, where the toolbar has gone. No tools. There it is. I'm going to click on the box, remove the line because I don't want any border around my box. And so I've got my guidelines. I'm now going to use the polygon tool to draw a triangle. Now, when I draw this, you can see the shape has got too many sides. Now, while I'm still drawing it, so I'm holding the mouse button down, if I press the up and down arrow keys, I can change the number of sides to my polygon. So I want a three-sided triangle. If I hold shift, it will keep it as an equilateral triangle, which is a good starting point. Uh, once I draw my triangle, I'm going to move it into one of the lower, the lower space of the square and use the guidelines to get the size exactly right. So I'll bring that down to the halfway point. And then let's colour that in red. So I've got my red triangle. Done. So now I'm going to copy this. So propeller C to copy, copy and propeller V to paste. So there's another triangle. Let's put it in the top half. And if I just go near to that corner with the arrow, it turns to a, a rotate. If I hold shift, it will rotate it through angles of 45 degrees. So I get a nice, neat 180 degree turn that way. So that looks pretty good to me. So now let's do the two at the, the side. So I'm just going to paste again, move it over, 
rotate it round, holding shift to get the perfect rotation, let's get that lined up in the middle, and let's paste again, bring it to the other side, go near the corner, hold shift, rotate it round, line that up with my guidelines, that's spot on, and then what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to hide the guidelines so I can't see those. So I'm going to go to View, Guides, Hide the Guides so I can see my logo. I'm going to select everything. Then I'm going to go to Object and Group. So we now have one logo. I can move around, position on the page, and again, I can scale this without any loss of quality because it is a vector image. Let's save that one. Save HSBC. Okay, so I've now created two logos in two different ways. One using geometric shapes, the rectangle tool and the polygon tool, and I use my guidelines to help me line everything up. And the other way was with the pen tool, where I could draw points, and draw, uh, and then I need something curved, then I can convert using the white arrow tool corners into curves and have a go at making uh, logos that way using the handles to change the shape of the curve. Okay, so two methods of drawing logos. You can, of course, use text tool as well to help you. That's the big T. You can add any text that you might want to. So I'll provide the JSBC and it looks to me to be the right font to begin with. So I can enlarge that. Put that down there and let's move the logo up. And there's my HSBC logo.